I appreciate it. And say whatever you want. Tell me. Say, hey, we think you guys uh, are great. We want to hear more. Or tell me, McGruff, you're uh, dumb and you're ugly and your mom dresses you funny. I don't care. Whatever kind of comments we want, we want them, we want them all. We want metal homework. We want to hear from you. We definitely appreciate all you do for us. Was there a good reason you missed Born of Osiris, or is it just because you're fucking dumb? All right, welcome to Non-Judgmental Podcast. I'm James McGruff. We got... Vitamin Nick. Leo. And we got... The Angry Gordon. The Angry Gordon with us today. So angry. And once again, we're always talking about metal and the things we love in the world. Unfortunately, this week, there was some uh, tragedy in the metal world as we heard that Chester Bennington from Linkin Park left us. Um... It's a big loss. It's a big loss for it, man. Uh, I know personally for a lot of us, man, that was uh, around the era that uh, a lot of people we know were getting into metal. And uh, uh, that hybrid theory was kind of a gateway for a lot of uh, people in our, our, our generation. To it was a good album. It was a good yeah. album. And it, and it definitely brought a lot of people into metal. Um, I know a lot of people said they kind of went toward a different direction later in their career. But uh, that, that album was heavy. It had some good songs to it, some great melodies. And, you know, we've talked about how, how metal covers all spectrums. You know, it's not just one solid sound. So, you know, we definitely, our hearts and, uh, and, and thoughts are out there with uh, uh, the, uh, his family and uh, anyone touched by his passing. And it's just, you never want to lose one of the community, one of the metal community. And I uh, figured we'd talk a little bit about that before getting into things and uh, maybe tell some stories and stuff, uh, personal things. I, I know uh, Angry here has uh, got some stuff that he has to uh, say on it. We were talking about last the, night. The elitist route. Yeah, the elitist route. We did wow. hear a lot about that, man. There's a lot of people online saying negative things as well. Um, just in, in in my opinion, and uh, and I'm sure a lot of people, it's just kind of pointless to do when you lose somebody who's part of the the, the passion that you love. I try not to get too conspiratorial, but you have to admit that is kind of kind of strange with the whole Chris Cornell birthday and shit. No, it, I mean he maybe been 53 on the day of. Maybe it is, but uh, it w- immediately my my process is like I don't even want to think about that. It's just to me, it's like it's sad that we lost one of our own. Because anytime we lose somebody like that, because I know more details are going to come out. You know, there's always going to be more info that's going to. Oh, be everybody's going to have to start pulling secrets because no one's there to defend themselves anymore. Absolutely, and that's the heartfelt part about it. When somebody <laughs> passes, it's like you can't ask them, you know, what were you going through or, or what was in your head, and it's just it's it's a terrible terrible thing to have. Uh, we like, like you said, we lost Cornell this year as well. Uh, I was fortunately able to see Soundgarden about 15 days before he passed. And if I'd have known at the time, you know, that I was seeing something that a lot of people would not get the chance to ever see again, I think I might have been able to appreciate a little bit more. And it just makes you appreciate, you know, when you go to these shows and when you go see these artists that you love and a show's coming up, don't skip it. If you got the opportunity to go, try to go. Because you never know uh, when you might lose that opportunity. I remember specifically, I bought Metallica ticket for the specific reason that Michael Jackson passed. I was like, well, these guys are getting older. The, you know, the, the, anything can happen to any of us at any time. So, especially when it's one of the yeah, metal I miss, I miss uh, Dave Brocky with Koala. Like, two months before he died, I, I could have went and seen him here in Pensacola. And oh, I just, he said Dave Brocky, right, know, from Mugwar. You know, Dave. Dave Rocky with the uh, Guar. Mm. You know, I, I missed him. Suicide has affected a, a lot of us. Uh, I think we've all lost a friend due to suicide. I agree. You know, whether it was depression or drugs or whatever it was. And I see a lot of people leaving a lot of negative feedback about you know, this guy. And to those people, I think you should just keep your mouth shut. Um, you know, it's kind of a touchy situation. You never really know why someone takes their life. So, I don't know if any of you guys have went and checked out that, uh, maybe it's their newest single. It's one of their newest singles, that song Heavy. Yeah, you were mentioning it. Yeah, I remember we were talking about this, uh, yesterday. Uh, uh, yeah, go on. Uh, they got a lot of criticism from that song, uh, because of course it, it, it wasn't heavy. Uh, now, when I listened to it and I first heard it, I thought to myself, this is a great, this is a great pop song. And it wasn't that it was a bad song, is I almost felt like they found their calling. You know, maybe being in new metal weren't really in their thing. Uh, it, it's a really good song. It's not what I listen to, but it, it is a really good song. If you listen to the lyrics now that he has passed, 
uh, you you got to stop and think, you know. You wonder if his fans killed him. That's wow, strange. man, that's a that's definitely a heavy opinion. I personally will admit that I, I haven't heard this song. Um, I'm going to check it out. Uh, I didn't get a shot last night at work uh, just due to you know how busy a lot of criticism was. over this album. And I, I heard yeah, that, but uh, I heard a lot of their fans actually it really it enjoyed a, it too. Yeah, he, I guess he came out said it was a very personal album to him, and uh, you know for someone to spill their guts like he does in this. Uh, that song heavy. I think the only the first like a second or something is actually him singing, and then it's some other girl singing. A, a, I don't know her name, like Kiara or something like that. She's pretty good. She you know, she does a pretty good job. But, uh, like I said not my style of music. It, I wouldn't have caught myself listening to it if he wouldn't have passed away. You know. But you check it out. I heard people talking about you know he spilled his guts on this song, and yeah, he really does. It it makes you really wonder. You know. Well, you know what it's like personally, especially like my heart goes out to the Lincoln Park fans right now. It goes out to the Lincoln Park fans right now due to everything, just um, due to the nature of of how it feels to lose somebody. And I believe that's something you can, me and you actually share a personal experience on. Uh, we lived together um, December 8th, 2004. Me and Angry lived together as roommates. And we woke up that morning, and uh, I know you're going to remember this clearly. He was in the shower listening to the uh, local rock station, and uh, I wasn't never, beating it. Not beating it. He was actually taking the shower. Definitely not beating it. You know, uh, we'll never know for sure, but we're going to take his word on that. And just, I remember walking through the hallway, man, and hearing, I probably uh, was. hearing the announcer on the radio say, "You know, uh, breaking news once again last night." Dimebag Daryl of Damage Plan and Pantera shot on stage, and and I know it's a different circumstance with an artist taking their own life uh, or, or, or or and being murdered, however you want to look at it. But to the fans out there who oh, these wow. artists that influence them and give them the opportunity to 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 have an outlet in their life to grow and progress, it's incredible the the amount of loss that we felt that day, you know, just due to the nature of. Of, of, of how of, of, of how close you feel you get to these people, even though you don't personally know them, it's how much it means uh, the music and stuff they influence in our lives. So my heart definitely goes out to the uh, you know fans of Lincoln Park and, and uh, Chester Bennington right now, and of course his family and loved ones. It's just it's never good to lose. Them. It once again goes to prove that you know these people, you know they're human beings just like us. And they sacrifice their lives to go out there, and I'm sure that it does take a mental toll. All the things you have to go through to be a, a, a national and worldwide artist like that, you know, you're putting your your career out there. Every day you're going out on the line and, and playing shows for, for people, and you're, you're spending your life writing the music for, for yourself and for the fans that, that love what you do. And... Uh, I, I just don't know what the mental toll would be on someone. I, I can't, you know, speak from experience in that life, but it's just not something you ever want to hear. But they're humans like us, and they experience travesty every day. And and you know, it, it's it's just it's just heartbreaking to hear that something like this would happen. You, you never want to hear it as it goes on. Actually, I have a funny Lincoln Park story. What's that? Uh, it involves you. Okay. Uh, when the second album came out, and angry, I don't know if you've ever heard this one before. Um, but, you know, tell me, uh, chime in if you have. But uh, me and Leo here, when we were younger, we were uh, supposed to go hang out with some girls. Um, a couple chicks we were going to go hang out with. It was the uh, uh, night of a couple days, I think, after the second album. Which yeah, least second album just My girls, they hit me, dudes. Me, uh, I don't. And uh, it was, uh, we were going to hang out with two girls. And we put in the album. We were jamming it out on our way back from a, a local electronics retailer. And uh, on our way back... We got a phone call. Do you remember this phone call there, Leo? I remember the phone call very, very well. All right. So essentially, just to uh, you know, make a long story short, his uh, folks at the time, underage we were, had uh, found his uh, stash. And I don't think I have to explain to anybody what that is. Um, it was weed. It was weed. <laughs> and uh, we were uh, summoned back to the house. Yeah, I mean, he was told to drop me off immediately and come in and you know, take your fake due diligence style. So I tell him, no, look, I got your back on this. So uh, we, we head back there with me in tow, and I run in and uh, put on what he called an Oscar-winning performance. Oscar-winning. Like, dude, he almost had me in tears, and I knew he was full of shit. 
full of shit, man. Like, I talked about the dangers of the drugs and how I wouldn't accept a, a friend doing it and how it just wasn't going to happen. And, of course, in my life, you know, I've, I've smoked a fair share of pot and you had my drinking. You know, never any hard stuff, but, I mean, like, I, I'm not going to say I, I, I do have an issue. I don't, I, I'm not going to say, you know, hard drugs all the way or nothing like that. But yeah, I ain't got a problem with people smoking pot. But uh, at the time, man, I just really wanted to hang out with chicks and jam some more metal. So I uh, came and went in there and pulled in Oscar winning performance. Man, he gave the whole spiel. Look, it's old. We've already had this talk. I'm not doing it anymore. Look, it's just, it's, an, look, we can throw it out. It doesn't matter. It's just a little bit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just, I never, I didn't remember it was there. I think it was you know? just some, some rolling papers and, uh, and a weed leaf and maybe some seeds and stems. So uh, it wasn't actually any smokables in that one. No, no, not at all. But uh, I was like, you can keep it. Fact is, we went in there with uh, grounded and no girls, no more metal, no more Lincoln Park in sight. And uh, at the end of the night, man, in the end, it's, it's all that really what matters because uh, we definitely went out and hung out with girls and we had a good damn time. And uh, it, it, I just I, I remember that the other day when I first heard about the the news of uh, his passing, it just kind of started making me think, and I was like, oh man, I remember us rocking that album out that night on that specific event. And it's just like, you know, you, you don't think about what sometimes metal and uh, music in general can do for your life sometimes like you know we take it for granted a lot um, it's kind of my point but as soon as that happened the other day that was one of my first memories it wasn't the first time I heard hybrid theory it was an actual personal experience that meant something to me and you know when it comes down to music all that really is is a personal experiences you know, you you listen to music and it makes you feel a certain way, and it gives you memories. And sometimes, you know, those memories they're they're going to last a lifetime, and they can forge friendships. And uh, you know, we were we were close friends at the time, but you know, we've known each other. I mean, that was that, was, that event. That was, was the first time we started ago. doing metal together. Yeah, know? yeah. That, that was that was that was when ago. you know we had we had found the the, the sound that we like, and. We got a little deeper and decided we wanted to make some of our own. And just like I said, personal experiences, man. That that memory of uh, of of that band playing stuck out really clear to me. Even though all those other little details are there, like I remember what we were listening to. And music can enhance your life in many ways. So anytime you lose a member of the music family, and for us particularly here at Non Judge Metal, a member of the metal family, absolutely, our heart definitely goes out to them. And that's from all of us. Want to hear more? Or tell me, McGruff, you're uh, dumb and you're ugly and your mom dresses funny. I don't care. Whatever kind of comments we want, we want want them all. We want metal homework. We want to hear from you. And we definitely appreciate all you do. Welcome back to non Judge Metal. All right. So uh, you were talking about your metal homework this week there, Angry. So what's up with that, man? What do you got for us? I honestly check out a whole bunch of stuff every week, but there's one band that sticks out in my mind. All right. Uh, I keep watching this band all over these festivals. Uh, every festival I've seen this summer has them at the bottom of the list. And they have a great name, so I figured they have to be a great band. This band is Wage War. Mm-hmm. Anybody heard of them? I have. I've talked about them. Definitely heard about Wage War. I have definitely. I uh, actually saw them at the uh, festival I went to back in May. Man, they uh, they they, they uh, played. I think uh, first or second day, uh, midday. Man, they were they were pretty good. I'd listened to that song. I think the river was one of their singles. I, I, I checked that out. Pictures, I think was the other one. Yeah, I believe yeah. so. Uh, I yeah, checked that I one out that before um, I went and saw them. Man, and I dug that and I thought, well, hey, man, I'm gonna check them out. They put on a really good live show, a lot of energy. So those guys are definitely an up and coming band to be watching for. Them. Well. To be honest with you guys, you know, before we started the show, I checked these guys out. And uh, I checked out one song. It wasn't The River. If I would have listened to that song, The River, first, I probably would have been an instant fan. But uh, Wait a minute. I are you, are you telling song. me you're about to admit that you were judgmental? Very, very judgmental. Oh, shit. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I gotta admit it too here in a few, so you continue. <laughs> we all grow. Well, we all eventually grow. That's the point of it. That's the non-judgmental mission, man. I went back and gave these guys a chance because uh, I'm not really a, a fan of I don't know. Maybe you call them soft vocals, clean it's vocals. Or, it's just clean, is it clean? Some people might just call them singers, right? 
but the yeah, not the not I, screaming I, part of the song. You don't the one the not screamy, the not gutturals. You, you, the the, yeah, the, the I, clean singing, the, the 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 good vocals, the singers, as some people would say. It's just too screamy yeah. to me. Melody, you know? the melody. No, I can I can I like the melody, but the pretty singing. Uh, That's a simple way to I put guess, it. It's the pitch. I don't know how to put it other than if you were to go check out the song Alive. That's one of the the, band, the, the songs I checked out. All right, Alive uh, by Wage The, War, the okay. first two minutes of it are just brutal as fuck, man. And then I think it's like two and a half minutes in, he starts singing. Yeah. I don't know what you'd describe that. Pretty. Uh, but I, I'm starting to like it. Uh... My girlfriend chimed in, and you know, as soon as the guy started singing, she goes, "Oh, I like this." So you know, I kind of, I feel as if maybe I found a metal band that me and my girlfriend can both share together. You know, and some parts of the song she'll like, some parts I'm gonna like. You know, I feel like that's I a like generalized going to statement. A restaurant that has everything we want. I feel like that's a generalized statement, though, because let's be fair. Your girlfriend likes Chimera, and that's a rare, that's a rare trait. Rarity. That's a rare trait, and I'm not. That's not me. Okay. Bad. That's not me har- harping on women at all. I'm just not I'm met too many chicks in the middle of the middle. She was lying. She was lying. What? Because when I asked her if she wanted to go to the Chimera reunion tour, she said, "Eh." All right. So I'm gonna give a big round of booze for that. Boo. Let's all boo her. Yeah. Let's do her. I love her to yeah, death, but so, come on now. You got to want to go to Chimera reunion tour. Well, you have to give it a shot. I believe she went to the Chimera show. And what did you say? Yeah, Naturally, I, I assumed it was we need to see other people. Because she seen I rested a bear once. So I can't offer too much. All right, wait, hold and on next, now. Yeah. I'm jumping the gun. You got to respect her for that. That's at least three points. That's three points three up points. on the scale, man. But Chimera's losing four, so I mean, she's still got to pick up a little bit, so. Two steps forward, one step back. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, yeah. So she tells me she doesn't like the how do you call it, uh, the guttural screams and the gr- the guttural growls, and I love them. They probably remind her of you, you yelling at her. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um. So anything else you checked out this week? I'm gonna tell you what I checked out right quick, if you don't mind. No, no, no I please. Gotta, I gotta cut off because a lot of people. Don't know about Dream Theater. Really? Dude, I'm telling you right now, I can understand anybody that's got hate from Metallica because I think Dream Theater should have got the respect Metallica got because of the fact they write, like, just epics, yes. basically. But um, I, 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 I definitely agree. agree. I know a lot, there's a lot of, um, they're really popular, like, in uh, the, the prog metal community, and they, they, have a, they have a massive, like, almost, like, cult following fan base. But there's a lot of people in our generation, man, who haven't heard this, who I think that would honestly really enjoy it. I'm talking about like and 14 albums. I mean, it's amazing. 15, like it's they, crazy. They've been doing it for a while. Yeah, 85, I believe, I, when they came around. I think it's just another one of those bands where their riffs are a little bit too complex for the mainstream listeners, you know? No, now it's complex with the gent stuff. That right there, it was like, oh, these guys were just really, really innovative, almost with their riffs and their their. They they were might might have been the first on the polyrhythm thing. I'm not kidding. Like there, yeah, there was a couple. Poly, is, is it polyrhythms or is it like, just it just like technical metal? There's, in the course there, of twelve minutes. Difference. In the course of twelve minutes, that rhythm changed completely. Are they from Canada? Mm. Well, it's understandable. Just because you have a long, I don't think so. I think it's Pittsburgh. I'm not one necessarily sure. when you're going for gent. Gent's very jazz. That seems to be a thing over a lot of bands. They go with uh, uh, changing time signatures, but um, just <coughs> overall epic songs with uh, longevity and everything. That doesn't necessarily make it. It, it, it will make it in tech, uh, like technical. They got math metal. You know, math metal. We were talking about math core the other day because I'm a huge Dillinger Escape Plan. I actually right. did yeah. put him on a little metal homework with that. That that the best way I could explain math metal is organized chaos. I think I used that coin. I coined that term the other day. Not coined it, but used it the other day when I uh, was uh, describing them to him the first time. I let him hear some of my uh, some of the songs that I've been into lately. Are you familiar with Dillinger? Yes. I've actually seen Dillinger uh, live. I have too, man. That's one of the whole reasons they, I went to that festival is because they're they're on their retirement tour right now. They're on yeah. their final final yeah. shebang. No, and, uh, I saw them. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely I'm glad I did. I actually did. went to a 14 hour long death metal fest. 
Yeah, I remember you telling me. Yeah, it was three different stages. And they headlined on the main stage. It was it was wild though, cause they they you know headlining there at the end of the night. People been waiting all day to see them. Like literally, when they played, people started pulling the the air duct um, coiling stuff out of the ceiling and swinging from wires. It got it got crazy. Yeah, that sounds. I think I think they demolished that that venue. Did uh, you uh, knock in into any metal homework this week? I didn't get a chance to get into too much metal homework this week. Uh, I've, I've, I've definitely uh, oh, taken taken some time to listen to whatever new stuff comes up. Uh, I've, I've gotten really big into uh, Jason Richardson, hmm. you know, another uh, another guitarist. He's uh, Titan, I believe, was the song I listened to. Hmm. I have to check that out. Jake and Jacob Richardson, Titan? Uh, Jason. Jason. Jason Richardson, Richardson Titan. Titan. All right. That, that's uh, a... Make note of that. Like, literally, <clears throat> I have to um, I have to speed my, my thought process up just to sit there and take that in. Oh. You know, like, he's going so fast on the guitar, and the entire song, he's up and down that fretboard, not not wasting on any space on it. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. A lot of his new guitar songs. I like to hear this from you because see, I, I I don't listen to it much from a musician standpoint, mm-hmm. so it's really cool to hear what other people are into and why. <coughs> well, see, one of the things I'm getting really big into, man, is not so much just watching a music video or hearing the song, but everybody's putting up these playthroughs, right? Yeah. And you almost have to because a lot of these songs, you can go and record you a good song and make you a good album with this stuff, but to actually be able to go back and forth to each part as one solid song. I, I feel like they're doing these playthroughs just to show these people, like, yeah, That's I can possible. play this live for you if I wanted to. If I wanted to. But I just want to sit in my studio and make more glorious metal. Well, that's cool, man. I mean, the, you know, more metal's something we all need in life. Not even sure if he's actually you part know, of I'd the like group. I'd like to assign him to metal homo You'd like to assign who? Uh, Leo? Yeah, okay. uh, I got something he, he would definitely appreciate as a, a musician. What's that? Uh, uh, I'm not sure how to say their name. I've been calling them Blackhole. It's B E apostrophe L A K O R. It's like uh, Bellacore. Bellacore. I don't know. They're from Australia. Another band from Australia has come to the pond. We'll send us a link. And we'll, uh, send us a link, and we'll be sure to put it on the non-judgmental uh, Facebook page. Couple yeah, I, just, I can't get enough of them. Uh, I I can't find anybody that understand them, and the only thing I can think of is maybe it's going to take another musician. Uh, I think they sound like a, a heavy metal garage doom band. It's it's beautiful. I no. think you'll appreciate it. Now, yeah, when you, you when you say doom, introducing you to this thing. If, if I could, if I could get a second, when you say doom band, now are we talking like drone? It's slow. It's like sludge, stoner metal kind of type stuff. Yeah, kind of. It's almost like it's clean metal. You know, you ever hear an acoustic song? <clears throat> Dude, so when you get into a lot of heavy. these different, uh, when you get into a lot of the playthroughs and stuff, with the, the with the way recording is going on nowadays, if you're doing uh, a direct line in and using amp models and uh, and like room effects and stuff on your on your computer, you're basically recording a complete clean guitar track, right? So if you look deep enough, depending on how these songs are actually being recorded in the studio, you can find clean guitar tracks for pre-existing metal songs. Oh, cool. I'm hmm. not familiar with such. I'm not either, but You've actually cool found again. some on accident. There's a... Um, they, they have a... Thy Art is Murder, where it's like... They've got the clean version of that where all you hear is a Oh it, like it's, it's heavy. You're you're yeah, listening to the guitar, there's just no effects added to it. You're you're just basically hearing clean electric guitar raw. Mm. Oh cool. Well that's definitely interesting. Yeah, I went to check this guy out this week. Which ones? 
Thy R is murder. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were definitely, we were talking hey, about that earlier. Right. It's it's good, yeah, I man. Did for seconds, and I knew I was like, okay. I think you that's know, the benefit of mental homework, man. Turns you on to stuff you might not have heard because you just, you know, oh, I got enough to listen to right now, or I'm into this. I don't know the the, the mental homework. It, it definitely helps out just from having somebody who can sit here and tell you a band one. You can listen to other bands if they if you have similar interests. You know, say someone's yeah. hearing the stuff that I'm talking about, they know if I if I mention another one. They already know the the type of uh, thought process I've got when it comes to the the music I'm listening to, you know. So I, I remember how many nights would I just sit up all night at your house just watching the metal music channel, oh, dude. I love just the like metal music hoping channel. to God that they would it. just pop a new metal band on that I never heard of. That's how I heard just, God forbid. We were watching the Metal Channel, and they gave you the entire four Constitution of Trees, and in its entirety, like a month before it came out. I, I think when and MTV, I pumped that album to every one of you guys, I was like, "Listen, listen, listen! This is." I this think is, God this forbid is was great. on Headbangers Ball. And that maybe where you heard him. Yeah, that's where I heard him. Sword. See, I, the sword. Oh, dude, the sword. Oh, yeah, the oh, sword. I found out about that listening to it on TV with you guys. Yeah. Kick yeah. back, have a burn. Well, just relax. See, yeah, I, I, I feel like that, like metalheads, they 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 need something like Headbangers Ball because that that was something mainstream they could tune into and find out new stuff. And now there's that's not there. I saw the video for Unearth Giles. First on the yep. Headbangers Ball. That's we how I heard of on Earth. Nothing about on Earth. Cool. Like as far as the oncoming storm. Yeah. Knew nothing about it. Yeah. Yeah. They well, knew that. Who, who knew they had an album before this one yeah, that you just heard that was heavy as fuck? That's even heavier than the one you just heard. You just yeah. sat home yeah. and made a pork chop dinner and you didn't go. Was there a good reason you missed Born of Osiris, or is it just because you're fucking dumb? When it comes to mental homework, I also have to admit that to this week it made me have to eat crow. Mm. I um, I had to... My mental homework was from a good friend of mine who suggested that... I'm just going to be that honest here. I've never liked Vince Sevenfold. And they are one of the largest metal bands like in the country right now, possibly in the world. Uh, they're, they're, they, they headlined that festival I went to. And it had some of my favorite bands on it who were opening for these guys. So... You know, I, I spent a long time consistently just not liking them, and um, I admitted it was that guy's voice. I thought the talent was there, but to me, it just didn't strike in the right way. And somebody said, "Man, they're growing." You know, every artist changes. You admitted this yourself. Check it out. I think you're going to like it. And they offered me. They said, "Check out the last album that came out. Um, I think it was Hail to the King. Came out in like 2013." And uh, so I picked up a copy, and I listened to it a few times in its entirety, and I had my foot tapping, and I kind of had some times when I was like. You know, if I could, if I was in a position to sing along, I might have. Um, so I got to eat crow on that, man. This album to me kind of sounded like a like like a wicked combination of like Metallica, Slayer, and Guns N' Roses. Like, man, it's definitely more more radio friendly than a lot of the stuff I may listen to. But when it comes down to it, man, like like the whole metal homework concept definitely hit me because I was sitting there listening to this record of a band that I have adamantly disliked and just been like, look, I'm not I'm not into them. I wasn't excited about seeing them live. I wasn't excited about being, you know, or, or, or checking this album out. I remember sitting there before it, and I was like, I don't want to listen to this, man. I want to go back and listen to that. Can I say there. something before I forget? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I witnessed a man play Guns N' Roses on his bass guitar with Guns N' Roses this week. You met, witnessed what now? Yeah, I said that right. I've seen a man play Guns N' Roses with Guns N' Roses on his bass guitar. I, I think I'm gonna need you to uh, clarify that a little, little bit more. Yeah, like was he playing with the band? He used roses? guns and, and roses. He used roses, actual to play guns and guns roses. And roses on his bass. I believe it's Davy Five Hundred Four. He has a whole bunch of bass videos online. So what? So, yeah, he's just, away. so he's just taking a nine millimeter and slap basing, pretty much. I don't know what kind of gun it was, but it was a gun, and it was a rose, and he was playing guns and roses. He played several songs. Whether you like it or not, that, that's pretty innovative. <laughs> that, that, that's that's, great. I just thought everyone should know that's out there. Well, I want you to send a link to me, and we'll uh, we'll post that, because that actually sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I watched it. Well, <laughs> I, I'm curious to see, man, somebody rocking out of Guns and Roses with Guns and Roses. 
Uh, I mean, the, the whole idea of it sounds insane and uh, sounds kind of metal. Anybody else got any metal homework they want to discuss or anything that they picked up this week? No, I would just say uh, A Nightmare to Remember by... Dream Theater. Yeah, yeah Nightmare to Remember by Dream Theater. Uh, what was that song by Wage War you were talking about there, Angry? Oh, man, what song am I not talking about? Hold on a minute. Uh, I see the song called Stitch. Yep. The River and Alive. Okay. Go check these out. They also have, speaking of suicide, they have a song in memory of one of their friends, Lewis Holford. And, uh, watch out, guys, and some cheers here. Right check that out. So, Wage Wars, definitely your metal homework for the week you checked out. Um, I checked out the event of Sevenfold and found out that I actually really enjoyed it. Um, might not be one of my regular listens to, but I, I gotta admit that I was way too hard on those guys and I was absolutely judgmental. Mm -hmm. And part of the mission is to pick up bands that you might not have listened to due to your, your prior interest, man, because our, our opinions and our tastes are always changing. You know, our metal palette sometimes needs to be cleansed. Sometimes you find something that just absolutely just invigorates you and changes your whole perspective on things. Um, this week, last Friday, a band called Shattered Sun out of Texas came out with their uh, debut record on Victory Records. Have a single out called Burn It Down. I, I shared it to the main uh, non Shadows Metal Facebook page. If you guys want to check that out, maybe uh, mention it on the forum. Uh, we'd like to hear your comments on it. It's a uh, new metalcore band with some melodic vocals. I found it to kind of sound like metalcore with like a death punch style vocal sounding, but uh, kind of like the, the chorus had like an inflamesy feel to me, man. I really enjoyed it. Like, I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was... I remember when you let me hear that. Like, yeah, the, the it's pretty good. And everything, it was definitely metalcore, it had that like positive type sounding guitar, but uh, almost with deathcore vocals. Yeah, it was it was definitely really neat, I but... I really uh, appreciate the mixture. Debut album came out uh, last Friday, a couple other bands. I'm going to try to continue to... Uh, follow up with new releases and let everybody know so everybody can get a little metal homework in. That's the non judgmental mission. Is Death Punch, you say? Uh, it it kind of had like that sound, that, that heavy sound of the vocals of, but the, the, the metal's incredible. Um, I'll send you a personal link to it, man. Their album came out Friday. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Um, so we'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely talk about that after the show, but, uh. Um, you using that as a verb, though? It has like a Death Punch, like. I, I mean, I just think Ivan punch, Moody has yeah. a very distinct vocal sound okay. and this okay. guy reminded me of that without sounding identical to it right and uh like i uh, just maybe to let people know you know what kind but of sound we're getting into Ivan Moody no Ivan Moody came from uh Motor Grader yeah I might have come from Goat Whore I don't know who came from Goat Whore I don't know I'm drawing a blank on that right song. now I don't know anyway uh hey, angry, hey, angry hold on let's bring up the fact that it was in the news this week where the Five Finger Death Punch guitar came from. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did anybody else hear this? I did not hear this. The Five Finger Death Punch guitarist came from... I guess it was... He was in Hillary Duff's band. Got yeah, money, everybody man. remember Hillary Duff? Hey, man, if he's a talented yeah, guitarist that, right? and he has the opportunity to make the money somewhere, yeah, well, right. you know, obviously he's doing what he likes now, rocking the metal out. Sounds like he was with her. I suppose so, but I don't know. <laughs> Another song I would I would like to mention. You remember that song in their their first album? Common uh, Clean. What is it? Zoltan Open the Sky. Oh, uh, the Way uh, of the Fist. The second song on the record. Yeah. Yeah. Another song. Yeah, everybody should go listen to that song. Yeah, I've listened to the album. I actually picked it up. Uh, went back a couple weeks ago and listened to it just because I felt maybe I'd been a little too judgmental on it. But I'll be honest, after their second record or first record, I really didn't. Mighty I really Knuckles. wasn't into a lot of it. So. I mean, if that's people's yeah, thing, yeah. man, that's cool. Man. I, I, I like the sound that they put out sometimes because I, you know, sometimes I like a heavy groove sound, but uh, a lot of their songs just don't resonate with me personally. So I, I choose to kind of go in a different direction with uh, the music I listen to. But definitely not, definitely not grabbing anyway. on them, man. They they pulled up. No, they do. They're new metal and they do it right. Like I'm not going to give them any grief, but uh, I kind of put them in the same category as like Drowning Pool or something. You know, yeah, new metal. That's exactly what I say. So while yeah. uh, wrapping yeah. up, go ahead and tell me uh, what uh, what concert did you guys miss this week? Angry? Are you talking to me? Oh, yeah. I definitely oh, am. Yeah. You were talking oh, about no. it before the show. 
But when you say you guys, I mean, I'm only one person, so I mean, shit. Well, I meant you and the old lady, because that's what you were talking about right before we come on here, and you asked specifically. Yeah, to talk I about guess it. you're right. You caught me, man. You caught me. <laughs> uh, we recently missed Born of Osiris. Mm. Uh, there's a couple other bands there. Oh, no, Volumes was no, with how did you? Volumes <laughs> and Born of Osiris, and you yeah. just. Volumes was with them. You, you just know, sat could, home you know, and made a pork chop dinner and just didn't go? I, I don't know what happened. Can, can I get a can I get a boo? Can I get a boo? Boo! Hey, I'm booing myself. Please. Yeah, you need to boo yourself. But, I, I gotta say, it's pretty. That's, that's the most non-metal thing I've heard all day. Oh man, dude, it's so non-metal. It's sad, guys. I, I let myself down. I let you guys down, and I believe that I've let everybody else out there. I I, I let everybody down. And well, you came in. You? I, I won't let it happen again. The Melvins are coming to town, guys. The Melvins. You're going to get a Melvins. chance to see the Melvins. Legendary rock group, I the will Melvins. I will not miss that. Especially who the fuck are the Melvins. I'm not familiar. I will not miss that. So I just want everybody, if you got a chance Too to much to get band, into right now. You ready? We'll, get we'll off your ass and go do it. Are you telling me right now that you're going to go see the Melvins, but you missed on Born of Osiris and... One, you will understand here after the show. I'm going to let you hear some uh, Melvins and check out how uh, influential they are. Um, and you'll understand exactly why he needs to do this. I can understand. Well, him missing... Well, see, I, I understand what he's saying. Him missing Born of Osiris in volumes makes him feel like was, was uh, an idiot, reason? Gordon. Yeah. Was there so, a good reason? Good was there a good there? reason you missed Born of Osiris, or is it just because you're fucking dumb? No, I bought some good weed, man. I just sat it down. Mm, that's the worst. So what you're saying is you could have took the good weed to Born of Osiris and oh, thought... Boo! Boo! No, no. Boo! He had some good weed, and he could have... I don't gone, know what else... I don't really have a reason. Trick. I just did it. You could have uh, met Born of Osiris. Oh, my... And oh. With this good weed. God. You know what, man? Yeah. We're, we're going to cut you slack on this one because you came in this week. You, you got I know you were upset before the show, and you had to have a few drinks because you just didn't feel like you could even face us with this terrible news. But you came in with Metal Homework, Awful, and I think that you rocked it out, man, and you've brought in some good suggestions. So we're going to appreciate that, and we're going to give you a mulligan on this one. But you get to that Melvin show, and you get a picture so we can post it on the non-judgmental Facebook page and, uh, and put it in the forum and uh, share it on our Instagram and Twitter. And uh, any of you guys out there listening, check out our, our YouTube channel as well and hit subscribe. We definitely could use the followers, and we uh, appreciate any uh, anything uh, and like anything we can do for it. Like, yeah, comments, I, man. Really, Give us metal homework. Like, like even if you don't, you know, want to like us, like I just want to hear some feedback. I want to yeah. hear what y'all are thinking. I want to hear yeah, what y'all what y'all want to hear more of. You know, I, I and plus, if y'all got stuff you want us to do, metal homework. You, you yes. Know, we need to branch out from just uh, the whatever people we bring in here. You know, we're trying to hear from everybody. And, Absolutely, and, and get all the opinions in. You know, us giving each other metal homework—that's all fun and good. But you guys are going to hear things out there that we may never hear. Let us know. That's we need right. to be more informed. Spread the love of metal in everybody's life. Yeah, it, that's the whole non-judgmental mission: is to take metal that you may have never heard and that you might, you know, it's like a book, like judging a book by a cover, like they say. You know, before we do that, we want to know if you think, hey, you guys have talked about this. We think you'd like this. Or we might think you hate it. Doesn't matter. It's your mission to make us check it out. Spread the love of metal. That's the. I would try to give you the best description of what I feel it would sound like. And whether you like it or not, it's up to you. Yeah, exactly. I appreciate it. And say whatever you want. Tell me. Say, hey, we think you guys uh, are great. We want to hear more. Or tell me, McGruff, you're uh, dumb and you're ugly and your mom dresses you funny. I don't care. Whatever kind of comments we want, we want them, we want them all. We want metal homework. We want to hear from you, and we definitely appreciate all you do for us. And uh, with that, I'm going to let uh, Angry uh, sign us out here. Say goodbye, Angry. Oh, oh hold on, man. Uh, let me tell you something. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I forgot what... <laughs> Yeah, it's it. raw. It's and, real. Uh, I was gonna fight out to that point right there. I was like, oh, I forgot. Let me tell you something. He was gonna do the outro. You were, you were supposed <laughs> to give us some, out, but, but, he, but yeah. he had some good weed. Yeah, but he had some so good weed and a good, good thought. Good. So. What happened? You know what? We will talk to you next time. This has been non just metal. non judge metal. Be sure to share us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.